welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. And my daughter Annette is with me today, and we're going to be talking about how to put your angels to work for you. Anybody interested in that? I think you will be because it's exciting when you get into the Word of God and find out what God's Word says about it. I want to read, first of all, uh, Annette, I want to read uh, Hebrews, the uh, first chapter, verse uh, 14. It says, uh, are they not all ministering spirits? Now, the subject here is angels. Let's back up a verse. Uh, but to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool? Well, he didn't say that to angels. He said that to Jesus. Uh, he's comparing the ministry of Jesus to the ministry of angels in the first chapter of Hebrews. Then he makes this statement in verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits? The angels are all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Well, that's us. We're heirs of salvation. They're to minister for us. Uh, much the same, of course, uh, quite a bit of different, but you'd say you go to a restaurant, well, you order two eggs over medium and hash browns and sausage. Uh, the waitress sees to it that that's what comes to your table. She doesn't cook it, but she sees to it that that's what happens. Now, listen to this. I'm going to read verse 14 again, then we're going to go into the next chapter because sometimes the chapter divisions foul us up. Are they not all, the angels are all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who are heirs of salvation? Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we've heard, lest at any time we let them slip. What have we just heard? That the ministry of Jesus is greater than angels, and that angels are ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for those who are heirs of salvation. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which first began to be spoken of the Lord and was confirmed to them that heard him? Now, he didn't change the subject here, did he? He's still talking about angels. Right. Now, if you're not careful, you'll... you'll just blink right back over into the way you've always heard it. How shall we escape if we neglect, neglect so great a salvation? Deliverance that comes by the ministry of angels is the subject matter here. Now, certainly, salvation, being born again, is a wonderful blessing from God, and it is deliverance from sin. But this is an all-inclusive word, and he's talking about deliverance that comes by the ministry of angels in the context of this. And if you let that slip from you, then uh, you, you don't really believe for what God has made available to us. I remember, and you remember this, I think uh, we were flying somewhere, and, and uh, the Lord told me to start teaching on angels. I said, Lord, I don't know nothing about angels. He said, uh, neither does anybody else. reason I want you to teach on it. So I, I, I said, well, you'll have to show me some things. And dig it. I had to dig in the Scriptures, and he said, I can do that. But uh, if you don't believe in the ministry of angels, then you're probably not going to have assistance of them. I mean, I don't know of any Scripture in the Bible that happens to you just because it's in the Bible. No, I don't believe so. And um, I remember that trip. We were flying to Colorado Springs, Colorado, when the Lord spoke to you to start speaking on the ministry of angels. Yeah, I think you was flying an airplane, wasn't you? I, I was. I, was I remember it was at Cessna 310 that I landed three times on the runway in the same spot. Because I wasn't quite <laughs> adept at landing that airplane. Maybe the angels were helping on that issue, too. But uh, I think that was a tremendous um, release of power in the earth when you begin to teach on the ministry of angels and of course I picked it up too because their ministry here on earth needs to be released. Yeah. It needs to be released and the way it is released is by us speaking in accordance with God's Word and believing in that ministry and being aware that they are there to help us in many different situations and particularly during this time where we're seeing a lot of turmoil we need the ministry of angels and their protection. And they're available to us. And yet a lot of times we're letting them just sit around, fold their hands, and lean up against the wall and wonder, 
when are these Christians ever going to put us to work? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, they realize that Jesus said you can have what you say if you believe and doubt not in your heart. Uh, I know it sounds like a broken record sometimes, but, uh, you, you know, I'm going to say it to you. The people get it. Uh, I won't hear it again myself. They realize what Jesus said because uh, Psalms 103, verse 19 and 20, it tells us that the angels hearken to the voice of God's Word. Now, this, this is my New Testament and Bible, and, and uh, the red, it's in red, that's what Jesus said, and he said, I speak all that what you hear my father say. But now, you can hold it up to this lapel microphone, it has no voice. Didn't hear a thing. But if I give it voice, and I say, blessed be God, I believe, because I've given, it's given unto me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over men, given to my bosom, there's abundance, no lack, my God has met my need according to his riches in glory. The Lord is my shepherd, and I do not want. The angels, I have given voice to God's word, and the angels hearken to the voice of God's word. So yeah. they have an assignment. Now they have something to act on. They have something to act you on. You have given them something to act on because they are here to also assist in having God's will done for you here on earth, to assist that to come to pass. Well, what is God's will here on earth? It's for us to be blessed. It is for us to be healthy. It is for us to be prosperous and successful. And yet they're sitting around. They're not going to help you be unsuccessful. That's right. So if you're speaking the words, uh, uh, the negative words, the words of the world and fear, they're just going to stand there. They have nothing to act on. They are activated by the words of faith, which is the Word of God. That's it. And, and there's an a avenue of protection here that angels, you know, we see it in the Old Testament. Uh, we, we see it in the New Testament. Uh, they put Peter in jail, and, and you know, the angels let him out. I mean, had to kick him in the side. I mean, they're going to pull his head in the morning. <laughs> and he's asleep, sound asleep. And he didn't have a Tylenol PM. <laughs> I mean, he, he just had the peace of God. That's right. And how many of us could go to sleep if they're going to cut your head off in the morning? Mm -hmm. uh, he was trusting God. And, and an angel came down there and kicked him in the side, woke him up, and caught, he thought he was dreaming. Got out in the street and found out it was true. He was out. And, uh, and he goes down to John Mark's house, and they had a prayer meeting down there. And they're praying, and they're praying that Peter would get out of jail. And, and he knocks on the door, and Rhoda, the little servant girl, she was the only one who had any faith at all. She comes to the door, and she looked and said, it's Peter. He's at the door. They said, it must be his, uh, his spirit. Uh, uh, it couldn't be. And they just kept praying that they'd let Peter out of jail. <laughs> and somebody <laughs> suggested, well, let's open the door and see. And uh, so they opened the door, and it was Peter. But, but the angels delivered him. Uh, we see it all through the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. When did we think it went away? What made us think it went away? Why did we think it's not for us today? I guess I guess Christians thought there was an expiration date. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> you know, this offer is only good until, you know, 1992 or 1892. But I was teaching on this in, in uh, the Atlanta area one, time, one Sunday, and the, the pastor was sitting on the front seat, and I was talking about and I use an illustration, uh, hypothetical situations. I said, now, uh, you go to talking negative and doubt, fear, and unbelief, you're going to set the, the other opposite force in motion. The devil will operate on your words. Uh, and if you speak faith and uh, in accordance with the Word of God, God will operate. The angels have a job. I said, uh, you know, a lot of people tell, tell their kids, you play in the street and you'll get run over by a car. And, and I noticed him fidgeting on the front seat when I was speaking and, and after the service was over. And I, I said this, I said, now the angels don't know why you want the kid to be run over by a car, but they know you can have what you say if you believe in doubt not in your heart. You say that long enough to believe it, you set a law in motion. And uh, it's going to influence what that child does because you have told that child uh, that. And uh, he, after the service, you know, I, I had said the angels sit there on the couch and say, yeah, he's in the street. I don't know why they want him run over, but let it happen. You know, they're spiritual beings. They, they, they don't know why you want some of this stuff to happen, but 
Anyway, after the service, the man said, uh, oh, Brother Caps, he said, I told my son the exact same thing. We told him he's five years old. If we saw a dead dog on the side of the road, we, we'd stop and show it to him and say, that's what happened he'd play in the street. And he said he played in the street one day and got hit by a car, but thank God he didn't get killed. He said, now I see what I was doing. I, I, I told him, I said, now here's a way to explain to the child. You will not get run over if you play in the street. I'm saying the angels have charge over you, uh, but you may wish to, <laughs> you may think you've got run over when I get through with you if I catch you playing in, playing in the street. But anyway, he said he realized that, that he could have had angelic protection over that child that by speaking the promise over him instead of telling him he's going to get run over. Yeah, well, that's a good example of focusing on what you don't want because what they didn't want is for the child to be run over or the child to be in the street. But no doubt, in his mind, he stopped along the road, pointed out the dead animals, said you will get hit if you get in the road. And so what was the focus on? The focus was constantly on death and on the negative things happening. It would have been just as easy to say the angels are protecting you, but make wise decisions mm -hmm. because it is important uh, as I heard Brother Hagen say one time, he said, well, you know, somebody was in a car wreck and, and uh, the pastor said, well, God just took him, you know. And he said, it's amazing how f many more people get taken when they're going 100 miles an hour than when they're going 50. <laughs> <laughs> so there is some wisdom there. But in spite of that, the angels are always available to protect and deliver us if we just recognize that. I had a fellow write me a letter one time, and he said, Brother Cass, I've been listening to your teaching on uh, angelic protection, and he said, uh, said, and you can have what you say, and, and this, that, and the other. And he said, uh, I'd always said, if I get run over, I'll be hit from behind, because I'm going to be driving fast enough to be a hit of everything. And he said, I got hit from behind by a, a, a gasoline truck or something. And, and it burned him over, uh, had a terrible wreck. And uh, he said, I realize now, I set the thing up for the devil, you know, and uh, lived out the reality of what he was saying. Well, I think we don't recognize sometimes that words that we speak as sort of a joke, I yeah. think you call them idle words and, you know, that we're just joking and saying things. If you believe what you say, then you better really be careful about jokes That's and it. just saying things that are idle. I remember uh, three or four Christmases ago, I had was driving a pickup truck, and we were making jokes at, at, at lunch about uh, the big truck. And I said, oh, yeah, I, I said, I just have to be careful. He said, I feel a bump and turn around and look, and I've run over a sports car. Well, that was a dumb thing to oh. say. And, you know, it's just all in the matter of joking. Well. After we had had our lunch and opened our gifts, uh, we were leaving, and I backed out of the driveway in that truck. And I ran over one of the kids' sports car <laughs> with that truck. Now, that, was, that, that came to pass in less than an hour. And I'm telling you, I quickly repented and thanked God that I didn't do any more damage than I did. But, you know, if I hadn't have said those idle words, I probably would have paid attention to the angel saying, look, look, look. Stop and look, look behind you, mm -hmm. you know, but we just throw these things out and then we create that around us. Yeah. People think that, oh, I was just joking, jesting, or it's just a figure of speech. Well, you know, you remember some of our friends one time, they came by and the kids were playing out in front of the house on a swing or something. And one of them said, now you, you watch and see, one of your kids going to get hurt. And it wasn't five minutes till one come in with his head laid open. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, the angels was probably there, but there was no assignment. Right. Uh, they said, well, we don't know why they won't hurt, uh, but whatever they say, uh, Scripture says they can have what they say, so yeah. they back off and let it happen, you know. Well, that's the reason that, uh, you know, uh, of course, you've taught on what you say and confessing the Word for years, and I began 
to every morning say, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. You've given your angels charge over me. They bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. And I'd quote the entire 91st Psalm. A thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I see and behold the reward of the wicked. And I mean, I confess that constantly. And um, several years ago, I was in Colorado, and but we were getting ready to go to town, and I just felt impressed to pray. I didn't, you know, know exactly why. So I, I went off in the field and started praying in the Spirit. And of course, I've always confessed the word, you know, since I had knowledge of it about no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Anyway, the three of us uh, got into the car, three of us girls, we got in the front seat of the car, and this was before the, the uh, seat belt laws. So yeah. we were sitting there with no seat belts on in this car. It was dark. We were headed into town, coming up over hills in the country, no lights. and. We came over the top of a hill, 55 or 60 miles an hour, and there was a feedlot, and the steers had escaped the feedlot and were standing in the middle of the road. Well, they were black. It was dark. We couldn't see them, and our car plowed into those steers there. I don't know that we even hit the brakes. And I'm telling you, it was the strangest feeling I've ever had because you expect, you know, to suddenly go to a stop from 55 or 60 miles an hour, that's gonna throw you into the windshield. The sensation I had is I just slowly slid forward in my seat, maybe two inches, in slow motion. I felt like there were pillows all around me. And then we came to a stop. And the car was totaled. And none of us, we weren't hurt. And I, I knew that the angels had protected us. Well, I was concerned that there was another um, a vehicle could come over the top of the hill and plow into the car and all the mess there. So. I went up the hill and my friends went down the hill to try to stop traffic. About that time I heard the sound of an 18 wheeler coming from my direction. I thought, oh Lord, <laughs> this guy is moving. I could hear him rumbling, you know, just boom, 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 boom. And I said, oh Lord, please help me get this guy to stop before he plows into this. And so I turned quickly and looked down the hill. And I could see that a car had stopped maybe a half mile, quarter mile down the road, and so I could see just the outline of the wrecked car. And I saw someone lean over the front where the hood was sort of, it, the hood was smashed up to the windshield. I saw someone lean over and do something, and all of a sudden the tail lights of the car came on. The inside lights of the car came on. We, we weren't able to get these lights on at all. And I thank God, I wonder how, they got somebody to do that, you know. The, about that time, the 18-wheeler came over the top of the hill, hit his brakes, went off the side of the road, avoided the wreck. So I thought, well, thank you, Jesus. That was close. A few minutes later, my friends came up, and I said, how, how, how did y'all know to do that to fix the car? And they gave me this blank look, <laughs> like a cow at a new gate, like, what are you talking about? I said, well, I saw you bend, somebody bend over and reconnect those wires or whatever because I could see their shadow, the outline. And they looked at me and they said, we thought you did that. <laughs> there was no one else around. And I know that that was an angel that did that. So they were available and I had confessed the word, I had declared their protection and they were there for us. They, they absolutely have an assignment when you keep the word of God in your mouth. Now, you remember in Dallas, Texas, several years ago when y'all had the dress shop. He was out to the, a, par, a Paramart. And uh, I was coming down the freeway, praying in the Spirit. I'd been confessing the Word, you know. Praying in the Spirit, and I, I turned off this exit right there at the Paramart. Well, I was going right, going to shoot right across that exit, that lateral road that I was going to cross, just going to go right straight across and go into the Paramart. Well, I st started to do that, and somebody comes up there to turn out and pull and block the exit where I couldn't go in, the, or the inlet where I couldn't go into Paramount. Uh, well, I just, there wasn't anything I could do but stop. Uh, and I, I stopped real quick, and there was a guy behind me, two guys, 
and it had a brand new car, and, and the guy that didn't own it was driving it, he was letting him drive his new car, and they was doing about 60 mile an hour, and they hit me in the back of uh, that car doing 60 mile an hour, and me sitting still. The gas tank ruptured, gas went everywhere, and, and it felt like I was pillows all around me, and I think I had my seat belt on, but uh, just kind of floated around a little bit, and it's slow motion, this is over, and I get out and look around, there's gas running everywhere, no fire, uh, amazing, and none of the none of the other guys were hurt. Um, but and Mom no, and I were standing there in the parking lot and saw yeah, it happen, and we were it. we were throwing our packages <laughs> in the air, going Jesus, Jesus, and running. <laughs> <laughs> because it was bad. It looked very bad. But now, this is the deliverance that, that is being referred to here in uh, the second chapter of Hebrews. Therefore, we ought to give the more, more earnest heed uh, to these things, lest at any time we should let them slip. Uh, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? And the subject matter there is angels. Deliverance by the ministry of angels. But if you don't believe in the ministry of angels, you probably won't have any, uh, very little, if any, uh, unless somebody else prays it on you. Uh, but it's amazing what is available to us today, no less than it was to Elisha, uh, to, to the Peter and the ones of the New Testament, the Apostle Paul and all of them. Uh, they were praying at midnight, you know, and the the earthquake happened, and, and an angel <laughs> shook that place. But uh, so many people don't believe in it. They think, oh, it's just, uh, you know, they just go on talking all this doubt and unbelief, and well, it'll, it'll always happen. Every time I do this, uh, uh, something bad will happen. And, uh, and the angels don't know why they want it to happen. But your words activate, and, and angels are, it can bind the angels what they can do. Well, uh, I think one of the reasons it's hard for people to believe is just as we've talked before, this is a different realm. These angels aren't often manifest to where you see them right. in human form or what you would call a human body type form, but they can manifest that They're way. They're fast. They are very <laughs> fast. It's like we talked about the propeller on an airplane. That propeller is moving so rapidly that you can't see it. You can see right through it. And the angels oftentimes, I have seen what I believe were glimpses of angels where it was just like a wisp. Mm -hmm. You just saw a wisp. It was kind of like the airplane propeller turning so fast. You can sort of see an outline. Mm -hmm. And they are in that realm, and we most definitely need help in this physical realm from the spiritual realm. And the realm where they operate is activated by faith and by your words. I, I want to read the Old Testament here in Exodus, the 20th chapter, I mean, uh, 23rd chapter, 20th verse. And God said, I, Behold, I send an angel before thee, he was talking to Israel, uh, to keep thee in the way and bring thee to the place that I prepared. In other words, the promised land. So he, he, <laughs> he sent an angel, and, and it was the angel of the Lord, evidently. And says, Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression. In other words, you transgress the law and you say something uh, that, that is detrimental or uh, something negative, uh, they won't pardon that. Uh, they'll back off and let it happen. But he said, uh, for, let me read it again. Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. But if thou wilt indeed obey his voice. Now, the voice of an angel uh, if an angel reveals something to you, he'll reveal something about the Word or something to keep you out of trouble, not how to get you in trouble. He says, Obey his voice, uh, thou indeed obey his voice, do all that, that I speak. I will be an enemy to thine enemy and an adversary to thine adversaries. Uh, for my angel shall go before thee and bring thee into the Amorites, the Persiavites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the Demonites, the Devilites, and he just and put it all in there. <laughs> and and uh, uh, in other words, they will give you sure victory. But uh, he said you, he, they won't forgive you. They won't, they won't let you off. And don't provoke them. 
don't provoke them. Now, uh, you know, Balaam provoked an angel and almost lost his head over the deal. Yeah. Uh, that 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 angel swinging that sword w wasn't <laughs> it wasn't in I mean if he hadn't a ducked he he it got him for sure, but uh, if it hadn't been for that donkey that donkey had more per spiritual perception than Balaam did, but anyway the angels have a job to do, but we're the ones that keep the word in our mouth That's right. to to give them an assignment. They hearken to the voice of God's word. And we're down to out of time again. And the product we're offering today is uh, uh, concerning angels, and I think you'd be interested in it. It's uh, important that we understand these things. Okay, certainly is. I have a DVD that was recorded. You can order it in DVD or VHS. While we were teaching on the ministry of angels at a church, I was speaking on how to put your angels to work for you. And that is a single DVD. It's offer number 2704. You can get it in DVD or VHS if you would like. And it's $12 plus $4 for the postage and handling. And our toll free number is on the screen 1 877 396 9400. Or you can go to our website and look at our bookstore at www.charlescaps.com. Com. That's how to put your angels to work for you, DVD or VHS. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? And the context of this, this is in Hebrews, the uh, first chapter, verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits, talking about angels or ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who are heirs of salvation? Therefore we ought to give a more earnest heed to these things which we've heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. I would challenge you today to take heed to the things that we've said here, lest you let them slip, and realize that the angels know that Jesus said you can have what you say if you believe and doubt not in your heart. And so they, they are busily about to see that that comes to pass if it's on the positive side, if it agrees with the Word of God. They're not going to bring the devil's words to pass that you speak. But you set law in motion. How shall we escape if we neglect this kind of deliverance? Well, until next time, this is Charles and Annette Caps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.